Well, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. It could be mental attitude types or overt types or mental attitude, or, uh, sins of the tongue. It could be any of these, sins of the tongue, overt uh, mental attitude. There's still sin. And 1 John 1, 9 says that we are to confess our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That takes us to the cross of Jesus Christ. For the believer, it's not about salvation. When he went to the cross as an unbeliever, it was all about him being an unbeliever. That he had to believe that Jesus had come, died on a cross, was buried and raised from the dead third day in order for him to be saved. That's because he was under 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin. Like in Romans 5.12. But when a Christian has sin in his life, it's the results of carnality. It's the results of walking in the flesh or walking by sight, not by faith. Walking in the flesh, not in the Holy Spirit. And the results in sin. How do I get back out of carnality and back into the indwelling ministry of spirituality of the Holy Spirit? I confess my sin. So I'm going to give you a moment to do that, <clears throat> and then we're going to get into this study this morning. Let's pray. Well, our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your marvelous grace, mercy, and love. <clears throat> we thank you, Father, that when you said to her favored one, you had promoted her. In the military, they call it a field promotion. It was a ranking title. Even Gabriel understood what an enormous title that was. Favored one from, of God. You have found favor with God. <clears throat> we all should have that. We all have the potential to be favored of God. And we'll try to explain how that comes about in our life, that we can become the favored of God. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things I want to do today is I want to look at four points on this salutation that Gabriel gave Mary, favored one. In the first point, what I want to do with you is I want to give you an outline of the context. In other words, 26 through 38, this whole encounter with Gabriel and Mary on behalf of the Lord. And <clears throat> so verses 26 through 29, we have Gabriel show up and he gives a salutation this salutation bothered Mary. That's verse 26 through 29. It disturbed her because this salutation, um, I mean, she understood what an enormous compliment in the kingdom of God that was to be called the favored one of God. God favors you. That's an enormous idea. <clears throat> That's an enormous idea. And so it's introduced to us in verses 26 through 29, the angel's salutation to Mary, favored one. In verses 30 through 33, the angel Gabriel inter, uh, uh, gives uh, Mary the first part of his sermon. He's been sent to give her a Bible study, her role in the plan of God. And he introduces it. In part one, that's verses 30 through 33, there's the mother's part in verse 31. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and you will bear a son. There's a mother part to this. And in verse 32, 33, there's a son part. He will be great. He shall be called the, most, the son of the most high God. He will reign over the house. You can see that when you look at that. 
So the angel gives Mary the first part of the lesson. Uh, in verse through 30 through 34, the reason he didn't go on with it is Mary interrupted him in verse 34. She interrupted him. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? You will conceive in your womb, verse 31, and bear a son, and you'll call his name Jesus. She says, how was that? So she interrupts his message with a question. And then we have verses 35 through 7. He comes back and gives the second part to the lesson. This time, he's going to identify the Holy Spirit, the Most High, and the Son of God. He's going to identify all three members of the Godhead in this. In verse 35 30 through 37, the angel answered and said to her, we're back, we're back to the lesson. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. And behold, now watch what watch he, he gives her now, he's laid out by, it. look, if you think the title favored one was big, whoa, whoa, Mary, till I tell you, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and you will give birth to the Son of God. Whoa, if you thought favored one was big. And then verse 38, the angel gets Mary's response. Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. And the angel departed. So I wanted you to get an outline because sometimes, sometimes we just, we read and don't pay attention to what the details are. And so I think it would be very important for you to keep that outline in mind as we, we, because this passage, 26 through 38, all three of my Christmas specials on Wednesday will come from this passage. Unless the Lord changes my, my mind, and he does that often. The salutation favored one reveals Mary's spiritual mature relationship with God. I would imagine that even Mary is surprised by that title. That was a title given to her. A salutation title, favored one. And I can tell you something about that that's kind of interesting, that salutation. In the Greek language, and if you have a pencil, this piece of paper, Bill, Bill worth your time to write this down. C H A R C H A R C H A R I T O O Karato O Karato Now I want you to see something. See the word C H A R I? If you put an S on that, you have the word grace. This is a word of grace. This is a grace word, it's a grace concept. It's a, a form of grace. But here's what's important, at least to a teacher like myself. This is a, a, a perfect passive participle, vocative, that's, that's a, a, he's addressing her, vocative singular feminine. Greetings, favored one, or hail, favored one. The perfect tense is an interesting, it means that this was completed in the past, the results, it remains completed in the present. At some point in her life, before this, before, before Luke 1, 26 through 38, came, passed through her life. In the perfect tense says there was some place in, at some point in her life, in her spiritual growth, that she reached spiritual maturity and God put his eye on her. Now, that's really important you know that. That's the perfect tense. The passive voice 
hail or greetings favored one, the passive voice is the voice, we call it the voice of grace. How did Mary get there in the past where she can be given this high degree of salutation? How did, how did, how did that happen? Passive voice. She's, listen, that's the faith cycle. She studied the word of God. She inhaled, exhaled. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is God breathed. And that's what, how that should be interpreted in the Greek. God breathed. That's inhale, exhale of the word of God. And it's profitable. He goes on to explain, and it's profitable to your life that you understand faith comes by hearing, hearing to understanding, where it becomes your belief system, like in Hebrews 4, 2, where it becomes your, you know, like the, the faith cycle. It begins with hearing, Romans 10, 17. You hear the word of God, you understand it, and then you believe it, Hebrews 4, 2. When you believe it, what you heard now becomes a principle of doctrine of faith in your life, a doctrinal principle of faith. Faith comes by hearing, understanding, and believing. When it becomes believing, it becomes a doctrinal principle of faith. Now it's ready to be applied to your life, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Walk by faith, not by sight. Then it moves to the completion state. That's where Romans 4.21 comes in. What God has promised, he will perform. The promise is over on hearing and believing. The performance is on application and completing. God will do what he says. You've got to trust God. That's that whole, the whole business. Your whole purpose of faith is to trust God when everything else says don't. Mary's going to have that. And you've got to have the maturity to be able to see and obey what God's word tells you in the directive will, as opposed to trying to figure it out on your own. Pu pu public opinion, whatever. So this salutation reveals Mary's spiritual mature relationship with God. See, the, the, the participle is that principle that he had his eye, somewhere in her past, he had, a, she reached spiritual maturity and maintained it. She decided, I'm going to walk by faith, not by sight. I'm going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, not, the, not in the flesh. And she began to work that out. That's the way she began to live daily, daily. She was living that way daily. And now she's at this place where God refers to her as favored one. That's favored, favored one is a title of grace bestowed upon you by God. I hope you get that. God is dealing with Mary as a spiritual adult, father, He's dealing with Mary as a spiritual adult rather than with a spiritual baby or a spiritual immature person. He's not dealing with her as a baby believer. She's in the perfect passive participle of her life. Favored one. And now it comes to, it comes to be important in her life historically. You, you see that? I want you to get that now. I gave you 1 Peter 2.2, 2, newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. 1 Corinthians 13.11, immaturity. You can always tell when immaturity is no longer acceptable in a person's life, when somebody says, why don't you act your age? <laughs> why don't you act your age? Why don't you act your age? Somebody is telling you you're acting immaturity. You're acting immature for your age. Well, anyhow, you should read these passages like 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Uh, Ephesians 4, 13, our word mature, teleos, is there. 
when I go through this, I want you to pay attention to the word to that's in brackets, T-O. Until we all attain, this is Paul's goal for the church, that all members who sit in Bible study are to attain, one, to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Two, to a mature man, that's where that, or, or woman, that's where she is. Three, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Did you get that? One, two, three, four. Did you get those four twos? <laughs> right? And what is this? What is this to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ? What is that? Here it is what it is. It's Romans 8, 29. It's Romans 12, 2. That's transformation. That's what that's about. In this salutation, actually in verses 26 through 20. Our passage 20, uh, 20, 26 through 30, Paul used three forms of the word grace experientially in the life of Mary. He used three forms of the word grace. Three forms. He used three forms of the word grace, chiros, experientially in the life, experientially, not positional, experiential. The first one is the word hail or the word greeting. I put it on your paper. It's C-H-A-I-R-O. It's an imperative. But that's not as important as what this word means. Almost always, this word Cairo is translated to rejoice. There is a word in the Greek language for greeting that wasn't used. Cairo was used. Cairo, C H A I R O, is a form of the is a form experiential form of the word grace. Greetings, greetings. Here's what he's saying to Mary. Because <laughs> we can't see it in English. I bring you tidings of good joy, of good news, tidings, good tidings of great news. You know, like in Luke 2. See, this, this salutation means I'm going to, listen, everything I've got to say to you, Mary, today is going to enlighten your world. It, it's, it's going to bring joy. Because she was a little afraid when he did the salutation. She was a little afraid of that salutation. No, he said, this salutation I'm going to give you, Mary, is based on God's grace view of you, the way he views your life of grace. And this message I bring to you from the Father to an adult spiritual child, meaning he thinks that you can handle it. Huh? Thinks you can handle it. He thinks you can handle it. The message that I'm going to bring you, the salutation, is based on the message. The message I'm going to bring you, I want you to have a positive attitude about it. It is to bring joy to your life. It is intended, it is a principle of experiential grace working in your life. It's part of your growing grace. It's part of your super grace life. You should look up and study the six stages of God's grace in your life. It'd be helpful to you. 
So he, he uses this word greeting. It's Cairo to rejoice in the salutation and the message that's coming. Greetings favored one. See, we got, we've got the same thing. It's a, it's a verb form. And, and it means that God has bestowed favor. God has bestowed his grace favor. He has, he has bestowed more grace, experiential grace. I'm going to bring grace to your, not to your salvation. I'm going to bring it. We're past that, Mary, in your spiritual growth. We're past that. I'm going to bring you great grace into your life. And it's all attached to the message Gabriel's going to teach you. It all has to do with Gabriel's doctrinal lesson. The Lord is with you. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Isn't that wonderful? But he's always with you. Mary, you're going to go through some tough times. But listen, you're spiritually prepared. You've been spiritually prepared for me to assign you this ministry. And I want you to remember the joy over, over ways the difficulties you're going to have with it. I want you to remember the salutation. Rejoice. You are the favored one. The Lord is with you. And I'm going to tell you how this is going to work in your life. And no matter how, what the circumstances are, you're prepared to rejoice in them. You know, the book of Philippians, joy. The word joy and rejoice. I like in verse 30 when he said, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found. And the word found is a verb. You have found favor. You have found favor. Notice it's in the accusative. Ends in an N. But he's talking about grace. He's talking about you have found favor. In, in other words, God is going to bestow favor upon her life because she's a spiritual mature believer. She reached it and maintained it in her life. Listen, and that's available to every person. Now, you got to get your head in the word of God. You got to put, you got to study the Bible. You got to study it every day to inhale, exhale. You got to, you got to be engaged in the word of God. The, the amount that you're engaged in the word of God tells you where your growth is. Are you a baby? What do you mean you don't know where your Bible is? <laughs> Are you an immature believer? I don't want to carry my Bible. Uh, people make fun of me. Well, it's a first aid kit. Think of it that way. You wouldn't be embarrassed, would you, to carry it and somebody cut their finger pretty bad and you know how to d deal with it. And you, you know, it's how you view your stuff. You are the favored one. You have found favor with God. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous? All three forms, whether it's C H A I R O in the greeting, Hail or greetings, or C H A R I T O O in the word favored one, or C H A R I N, which deals with found favor. You have found favor. The Lord is with you. You have found favor. See, they're all experiential parts. They're all experiential parts of Mary's spiritual growth maturity and now taking on an enormous ministry. God wants enormous ministry for your life. Oh, I know you go like, well, I'm, you know, I'm nobody from nowhere. Or as I often say, I was from Podunk, Michigan. Yeah, where I was from, <laughs> nobody knows. I mean, you, you have to live there to know it. It's interesting how it's, it's, it's not about you. It's about how, how God favors you. It's how he favors you. It's how he favors you. All three forms of this word of grace, 
All three forms emphasize God bestowing his grace experientially upon Mary and others. God bestowed his favor upon Mary's circumstances in life in the plan of God, and he will always do that as long as she walks by faith and not by sight. And that walk, no matter how difficult they get, when she comes back from Elizabeth three months pregnant, is going to hit the fan with Joseph. And the writer, the, the angel is telling her, Gabriel is telling her, I want you to remember the salutation. In your worst days, remember how God views you. You're his favored one. He has chosen you because you have lived your virginity experientially. You know the word virgin is used three times? People go, like, where do you get the idea of virgin? <laughs> In the story, it's used three times. And this was a choice she made. We all make choices. It's a choice she made. It's a choice she made before she met Joseph. It was a choice she made after she met Joseph. Why? Because, listen, she desired to walk with the Lord, and the Lord desires that walk with her. Nobody desires the walk with the Lord more than the Lord desires it. He wants to be an adult parent with an adult child and talk about adult things in the biblical kingdom. Do you understand any of this stuff, my dear hearts? And so what we get in these three Greek words, experiential grace, what, what, what we get from all of these is we get a view from the God side. All of these are from the God side. Greetings, favored one. You have found favor with God. The Lord wants to be with you. The Lord is with you. Okay. Let's look at point three. It was God who gave Mary the title favored one. Listen, the church would have never came up with a title like that. They'd have come up with a lot of goofy titles, and they have. They'd have never come up with a title like favored one. And yet that's her title. Here's what I'm going to call you, Mary, and here's what you're going to call my son. Here's what I'm going to call you, and here's what you're going to call my son. <laughs> this is so good. It was God who gave Mary the title favored one in Luke 1, 26 through 30. God was describing his spiritual relationship with Mary as an adult pot there. You know, sometimes God's your Abba when you're a baby. He's your Abba when you're immature. But when you become an adult and mature, he treats you like a father, not, not like a daddy. I mean, he, he expects you to act your age. This is the difference between positional sanctification and experiential sanctification. What we're talking about, Mary, today is experiential sanctification with the word grace. Not grace in salvation, grace in life. Listen, God's got more words about grace for your life experientially than you could ever count them. I just gave you three. God was not speaking from Mary's positional sanctification as a child of God, but rather her spiritual maturity, experiential sanctification by one who has found favor with God in the perfect tense, passive voice, and a participle. Mary wasn't chosen only because she was a virgin. That was important to Isaiah 7, 14. But because she chose daily to live her single life as unto the Lord as a virgin. Now you should, you should write down 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through the 7th chapter, verse 3. 
and 32 through 35. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 7, 3. Now we're in the seventh chapter. I also want you to read 32 through 35. And maybe I can tease you enough to read it all. Because this is what he's asking all, all of us. I mean, one moment we walk, walk by faith, and, and the next moment we walk by sight. Now he wants us steady. Listen, spiritual maturity is being steady, and it's choices you make and commitments you make to the Lord. Undistracted, Paul, in 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter 39, Paul said, or maybe 35 through 37, somewhere in there, he says, undistracted devotion to Christ. Undistracted devotion to Christ. Let me tell you, let me tell you, when you reach spiritual maturity, if you begin to live that type of choices in your life, what does the Bible say? I'm going to go with the Bible. I'm not going to go with the world. And look, if you're dating somebody who can't handle that, they're with the wrong person. They definitely are with the wrong person. Don't become that wrong person. If you could do that, that would save a lot of headaches for counseling in the church. Point number four, Mary was a favored one because she had reached and maintained a consistent walk of the faith cycle as a spiritual mature believer. You know, like Ephesians, like we saw earlier, Ephesians 4.13. Or in 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17. You, when you read 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, you ought to do, he, he, here's what he says, and you need to read it for yourself. But he said, all scripture is inspired by God or God breathed. That's inhale, exhale. You breathe the word of God in and out. In, spiritual growth, out, walking by faith. All scripture is inspired by God or God breathed and profitable. Now, here's what people miss. They miss the word for that's used four times. Profitable for what? All scripture is God breathed. Inhale, exhale. Take it in, give it out. That's the faith cycle. Inhale, exhale. Um, for, for what? For what? How does it profit me? Ah. Well, since you ask, here's how it profits you. If you inhale, exhale, here's how it profits you. It profits you for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate Equipped for every good work. For teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, and for, that's five in it, <coughs> for every good work. One, two, <coughs> three, four, five. That's five, not four. You always check my math. You always check my math. <coughs> Listen, all scripture has been designed by God to be inhaled and exhaled in your life. Take it in, apply it. Now, it's for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work or divine production. See, Mary's about to engage in divine production that's going to have historical or biblical history impact. He wants that out of your life and mine. Mary had achieved through her spiritual growth maturity a status that we call super grace maturity around here. This is who Mary is in our story. <clears throat> this is why she's given accolades. Here, this idea, you say, well, Ron, where do you get this idea? Well, you know I wouldn't have it if I didn't have the Bible. <clears throat> I find it in 2 Thessalonians 1.3. 
we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged. Look at the Greek word. It's made up of two words. Hooper, that's where you get super in English, super. It's a super athlete, a superstar. And then oxana is the word for growth, a system of growth development. We call that because your faith is greatly enlarged. <clears throat> we call that super grace. And the love of each one of you towards one another grows even greater. Because of her super grace status, Mary was picked <clears throat> for a spiritual impact ministry in biblical history in the plan of God. She's, listen, let me show you how big this is. She's going to fulfill through her virginity and her spiritual growth maturity with it. Isaiah 7, 14. That's a 700-year-old prophecy that she's going to fulfill. And that prophecy is going to have spiritual impact upon biblical history as well as human history. This can, be, this can be for every church age believer. Are you willing to are you willing to inhale, exhale? Are you willing to work the faith cycle, hearing, believing, applying, completing in your life? Are you willing to do that? Every church age believer can reach super grace status, and super grace status is where your life has impact in the plan of God. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, Paul wrote, implore you, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. And that's certainly my appeal. I implore you. You're not going to have this opportunity that Mary had if you don't study the Word of God. You've got to inhale, exhale. You've got to, this has got to become your life. This is how you live your life. And this is how God intervenes in your life in the plan of God in dramatic ways. You wouldn't want to miss this. You could. but you shouldn't. It's available to all. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for your love, mercy, and grace. We thank you for these that have come our way by the internet and have spent an hour with us during their lunchtime or whatever time they had. I pray, Father, we would take serious all the things that God said to Mary could be said to us because they were said to her because of her spiritual maturity and her key role in the plan of God. We all want to know what that is, Father, and we should be able to know what it is before we check out, before we leave this world. I pray, Father, you would encourage our hearts to study and be that person favored of God, favored of God. You have found favor with God. How does that happen? doesn't happen without spiritual maturity and a commitment to it. Not just a commitment to the faith cycle, but a commitment to my life, my choices. Just like Mary, she had to make choices. We all have to make choices. Choose on the side of God. You'll be benefited for it. In Jesus' name, amen.